Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy back at it again with another Minecraft video and today I want to give you guys a tour of the desk setup that I've been using for a while now. So I'm actually heading to campus for the first time ever in a few weeks. So I thought it'd be good to show you guys my current setup before I leave. So let's get to it. The desk I'm using is from a company called Tribe Signs. It's an L-shaped desk, as you can see by its L-shape, which fits nicely into this corner of my room. This desk is also pretty unique in that the side piece can actually swivel out to make the desk even longer or swivel in to use it as a regular desk. I would show you guys the swiveling motion, but not only is there a wall in the way, but it's also kind of heavy. The top of the desk is made from this engineered wood with a dark walnut finish, which is the exact kind of finish I was looking for back when I was in the market for a new desk. Its legs and supports are made from metal, and the shelves and cabinets are made from particle board. There's actually a lot more storage space on this desk than I need since I don't have that much stuff in the first place, as evidenced by the shoebox and the shelf that's designed for holding a PC if I had one. I spent a lot of time looking for a desk around August of last year, and it took a while to find this one. I really wanted to get an L-shaped desk so that I could face the window in my room while I sit down, so that I could get better lighting in my videos and in Zoom meetings for school. And I decided to ultimately go for a sitting desk over a standing desk because I figured that there would be no way I would be standing while doing work and now my tailbone hurts from all the sitting I've been doing. So maybe next time I'm in the market for a desk, I'll consider a standing one, but this L-shaped sitting desk is serving me pretty well, especially given its low price point. Moving on to my chair, I'm using a Tempur-Pedic office chair from Staples with this mesh back. Previously, I was using this really simple office chair that we've had forever, and it started falling apart towards the end of fall quarter, so I got this one. It's really comfortable with the mesh back and headrest, and the cushion is also pretty thick, which is really nice to sit on. I do also have this donut pillow that I sit on on top of my actual chair. There's nothing wrong with the cushion of the chair, but because I spend an exorbitant amount of time sitting down, my tailbone had been hurting, which is where the donut pillow comes to the rescue. Looking back, maybe I should have gotten that standing desk after all, but oh well. This chair comes with all the basic functions. You've got the height adjustment, back tilt, armrest height adjustment, cushion adjustment, all the goodies. This chair can also be considered more on the budget side, so it isn't a Herman Miller or anything, but I've been super happy with it so far, and honestly, I wish I could bring it with me onto campus, if only I could somehow fit it into my luggage. Now onto my computer, the brains of this whole operation. Besides me, of course. I'm rocking the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, which I have completely specced out in everything except for memory, because most of my laptop storage is taken up by camera footage, and I can always just transfer that onto an external SSD whenever it gets full, which is a lot more cost effective than dishing out a couple hundred dollars more for extra storage on my MacBook. I know that the M1 MacBooks are out and that a 16 inch version of that is set to come out later this year, but I just bought this last year and as a college student, I don't exactly have thousands of dollars to spend on getting a new laptop every year. Besides, this MacBook has been completely specced out, like I mentioned, so it does run very fast. I can have Final Cut Pro, Photoshop, and like 10 different tabs open at the same time and not run into any issues. So I'm still several years out from needing to replace this. This is my baby. I actually wanted to try to get a PC and make this into a dual computer setup, but computer parts are especially hard to come by these days, especially graphics cards, so I've been holding off for now. Hopefully, sometime in the future, graphics cards can come back down to their normal price, but until then, we're sticking with the MacBook. 
In the first place, I'm a big Apple user because of how seamless it is to work between my computer, my iPad, and my phone, so I'm not really in a rush to get a PC. My shoebox can keep my shelves occupied until then. In one of my recent videos, I showed off this new monitor I got the other day. This is the 35WN75CB from LG, quite the mouthful. It's a 35 inch 4K curved ultra wide monitor and it has been a complete game changer. Watching anime on this is an amazing experience. I have this monitor hooked up to my MacBook through an HDMI cable running through this dongle. The monitor also came with a USB-C cable, but since I'm already using a dongle for the USB type A adapter and the SD card reader, since the MacBook itself doesn't have those, I decided to just have everything run through just one cable. This monitor has been really awesome for boosting my productivity because with this upgraded screen real estate, I can have multiple windows open at the same time, which is really good for when I'm writing papers for college or for when I'm watching VTubers. I use both the ultra wide monitor and the MacBook screen together, or just the ultra wide, whatever I'm feeling that day. Having the MacBook open means that I can use the touch ID on the keyboard, which is really helpful because I'm constantly having to log into things. And since I do still need to use the actual MacBook, I have it on this laptop stand that I've had laying around forever instead of getting a dock for it. It does take up some space on my desk, but I still have plenty of space to spare, so it's not really an issue. All right, onto the peripherals. I have this desk mat that I picked up from Amazon. I got mine in black, going with the general color scheme of the rest of this setup. Back when I was only using the MacBook, this mat would move around quite a bit, which was kind of a bother when it wasn't parallel with the edge of the desk. But now that I have this monitor, it weighs the desk mat down so it doesn't really move anymore. If I could go back, I would have gotten one with a cork bottom or some other non-slip material. But again, not really an issue anymore. For my keyboard, I'm using the Logitech MX keys, which I have really enjoyed using. It's connected via Bluetooth. You've got all the keys you could wish for. You've got a nice backlight for when you're working at night and the keys have pretty good travel. A bit of an unpopular opinion, but I'm not really a big fan of mechanical keyboards. I think they're too loud and obnoxious, so I was looking for something similar to the keyboard that's built into my MacBook, and this has been amazing so far. For my mouse, I have the Logitech M510, which I have connected via this little USB adapter connected to my dongle. It's a pretty solid mouse and fits my hand pretty well. I don't really have any complaints with it, but people are always hyping up the Logitech Master MX3, which does look pretty cool, so I've been thinking of getting one in the future. But the mouse I have right now is pretty solid. It does all the mouse things you could want, left clicking, right clicking, middle clicking. You've also got these two buttons on the side that you can use to go back and forth through pages. I don't really use it much, but it's there. Overall, solid mouse. Over to the side, I've got this pretty sick lamp from a company called Tautronics. I can adjust the tilt and angle of the lamp to my liking, and it has 12 different brightness settings and 5 different color temperatures, so I can really set it up however I want. I prefer keeping it at the warmest and dimmest level for when I'm working at night, but I do turn it up to the brightest and coolest settings to help light up my face when I'm in Zoom meetings. Previously, I had a lamp that had two settings, on and off, so this has definitely been quite the upgrade and I'm very happy with it. Lastly, I have the 2020 11 inch iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil 2. Technically, these aren't part of my desk setup itself, but since this is my video, I get to make the rules. So as a college student that has been doing all of his classes from home so far, the iPad Apple Pencil combo has been really awesome. I used it for taking notes, doing homework, sitting for exams, all the things that I would have been doing with paper and pen have been completely digitalized. I prefer taking written notes to typing because it helps me remember better, so having a digital version of it is perfect for me. And as I mentioned earlier, the connectivity of the Apple ecosystem is unmatched, so transferring files between my iPad, my iPhone, and my MacBook are completely seamless, 
which definitely saves me time on my work. If you're a college student or even a high school student and you haven't already, I would highly, highly recommend using an iPad and Apple Pencil for all your note taking needs. That's about it for all the tech that goes into my desk setup, so I'll just quickly walk you through everything else I have. Next to my lamp, I have this panda cup and a little figurine of Jungkook, so that I never forget. On the wall next to my desk, I have this Stanford pennant, so that whenever I look at it, I can pretend that I'm on campus. And sometimes, when I look at it, it almost feels like I'm there. Onto the side portion of my desk, I have this painting of Saitama from One Punch Man that I made in like 8th grade and this little pan decoration. My setup is pretty minimal overall so I didn't actually have anything to put on this side of the desk but it looked weird leaving it empty so I just plopped these things down here. Under the desk I have two shelves on the side. The top shelf is filled with books to give me a more intellectual atmosphere when I'm doing work. And the bottom shelf is empty, again, because I don't really have that much stuff. On the other side of the desk, I have this little shelf where I keep my camera and lenses and stuff, which makes it really easy to just pick up and start filming. It's kind of empty right now because I'm using my camera to film, but just use your imagination and imagine that there's a camera and also other stuff there. Under that, I've got two drawers where I keep a bunch of cables, tripods, chargers, external SSDs, and a bunch of other random things. To the left, we have two shelves. On the bottom shelf, I have a couple old notebooks that I still use occasionally. And on the top shelf, I have my Stanford hat. Again, because I didn't have anything to put in there. To the left of that, we have a spot where I would put my PC if I had one. Instead, I'm keeping this shoebox here filled with secret items. If you have any guesses as to what I keep in here, leave them in the comments below. The only hint I'll give is that it's something that has appeared in a video before. And the last thing I can show off is my cable management, which as you can see is pretty non-existent. I wanted to get one of those cable trays that goes directly under the desk, but I am leaving soon, so I guess I can just do that when I get back. I don't really look down there that often anyway, so out of sight, out of mind, I guess. And that about wraps it up for my desk setup. I think I've covered everything. It's a pretty minimal and simple setup overall. I don't really have any extravagant RGB lights or super fancy equipment, but I'm very content with how everything is. If you are interested in anything that you saw here in this video, I'll put links down in the description for as much of this stuff as I can find. And I think we'll end things here. Like I said, I'm heading out to campus in just a few weeks, so I won't be using this actual setup for a while, at least until I come back home. So this has really been more of a look back at how my whole productivity setup was and I hope you guys enjoyed. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video, which may or may not be on Stanford's campus at long last. Very excited, fingers crossed. See ya.